At a time, I was stuck in my ways. I didn't know a path to go. Much to my breath, I looked out upon the precipice and all I saw was frozen snow. With my body all barren, although I stayed moving forward as my pursuers proved nearer, cracks appeared all around me and the possibility of drowning seemed to come into my peripheral view. I could not stop my momentum. One leg after the other, feeling the gravity of my muscle contractions, each step felt cramped, but a comfort had arisen. The day came and my being started to listen. All praises rang from those who came before. They kept ushering me to swim to shore, so I kept swimming until I got deeper and deeper, further some still to go. And when I woke up to come around to who I'd become, I found that I was the ball, the stick, the chains, and the gun. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I know this is a different kind of video, but um, I thought it was important to make. So this video is gonna be an informational video about the importance of Juneteenth and the roots it has heavily in where we are today as African-American people. So Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the US. And just to give you guys some background, during 1865, on June 19th, Union soldiers led by Major General Gordon Granger landed at Galveston, Texas to let it be known that the slaves were free. Two years after the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. So I bet some of you are asking, well, why did it take two and a half years um, to free the slaves in Texas? Well, there was many accounts um, that were listed about this throughout the years. But the fact of the matter is, is that things just stayed status quo in Texas, mainly because the Union soldiers did not reinforce the Emancipation and Proclamation Executive Order by Abraham Lincoln. Um, so once uh, Granger uh, came to Texas, he gave um, a general order three to the, to the slaves of Texas saying that they were free. And as a result, a lot of them left Galveston, Texas to go reunite with other family members in other states, uh, most specifically Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. And um, this, of course, spurred upon a reassurement of um, confidence that uh, African Americans could move on and could actually um, have rights as, as human beings and um, contribute just like everybody else to the United States. And um, a lot of the former slaves would go back to Galveston, Texas uh, to celebrate Juneteenth as well. Uh, so later on, um, there were festivities, of course, like rodeos, fishing, barbecuing, and baseball, as well as prayer being a very big component. In the early days, most of these festivities were held in rural areas due to the resistance of the public not letting us use uh, public property to celebrate. One of the earliest documented uh, pieces of land that, that was bought uh, by an African American for the celebration of Juneteenth was by a man named Reverend Jack Yates who organized a fundraiser of $1,000 for the purchase of the land that is now called the Emancipation Park in Houston, Texas. One of the largest celebrations um, after that point was also at the Booker T. Washington Park, which had become the largest Juneteenth celebration up to that point in 1898. Moving on in the early 1900s, there was a decline due to family taught practices and textbooks mainly saying that the Emancipation Proclamation was the end of slavery. And even to this day, we still have this problem because um, even I um, had no idea about Juneteenth and I only um, 
knew about the Emancipation Proclamation from a lot of the things I read whenever I would go over African American history in my textbooks in middle school and high school. Uh, later on in the uh, 1950s and 1960s, Atlanta civil rights campaigns resurged the Juneteenth celebrations, and subsequently the Poor People's March to Washington also did this too. After this, um, two of the largest celebrations of Juneteenth were in the state, um, not the states, but in Milwaukee and Minneapolis. Later on, in Jan on January 1st, 1980, Juneteenth became an official state holiday through the efforts of Al Edwards, who was a African American lawmaker. Um, so the point of me telling you this history is to, to let you guys um, now only in on the fact that we as African Americans have been struggling with um, just getting our voices heard and just being free in general um, for not a, for a very long time, essentially. And even through all of this, there has been like, you know, a lot of false information passed around about um, how we got here. And, um, you know, it's a real shame, but that's just the reality we live in. But the fact of the matter is, I think what is important is Juneteenth's message of equality and family, which is more important now than ever before. The, the death of George Floyd, uh, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Breonna Taylor, David Dorn, Michael Brown, and, and so many others that have died, um, not just from police brutality, but throughout American history, weighs heavy on me, but, I, but on all of us. And we have to use this togetherness and try to push forward a message of equality um, to have the police interact more with uh, African American communities um, to encourage the rise of black businesses, but most importantly, to help us inspire the change that we want to see in ourselves. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have to be the ones to act. Or, I mean, who else is it going to be? But that's all I have for today's video. Thank you all for listening in. And um, I would definitely appreciate it if you subscribe and leave comments um, and questions more importantly. Uh, I will have links in the description to where I got the information about Juneteenth. And I hope you take this opportunity to educate yourself and continue um, to fight the fight of uh, for equality and change. Thank you.